How much money does Jeff Bezos have? I think he's worth 80 something billion. So let's round that to 100 billion. What can I do with 100 billion dollar bills? Well, I can take them and put them end to end, and I can go around the earth 200 times. Wow, that's a lot. Wait, but I have some leftover money. You still have money left over? It's okay. <laughs> so now I'm gonna put them vertically and see how high they go. Well, with what's left over after you went around the world 200 times, you can go vertically to the moon and back. 10 times. Yeah, that's insane. So let's go up by another factor of a thousand from a billion, which is nine zeros, to now we go to 12 zeros. 10 to the 12th power is a trillion. About a trillion seconds have passed since cave dwellers painted on cave walls. Here's why that's significant because you can actually count to a billion in your lifetime. And I celebrated my billionth second. I don't know if you did, but I celebrated my billionth. I don't know where you were. You live your billionth second between your 31st year and your 32nd year of life. So I counted that out and I had a real fast little sip of champagne and that was my billionth second. So how long will it take to count to a trillion? So you need a thousand times 31 years to get there. How long is that? 31,000 years. Quadrillion, 15 zeros. That's a thousand times bigger than a trillion. About a hundred quadrillion, I calculated this, estimated number of sounds and words ever uttered by all humans who have ever lived. That doesn't include flatulence though. <laughs> so you wanna get a sense of the scale of these numbers. I'm just putting it in context here, quintillion. So that's a one with 18 zeros. Okay, that's about the number of grains of sand on an average beach. Oh, just one beach. Wow. Just one beach. Next time you go to a beach, just pick up a handful of sand and just look at it. The sand is deep and it goes into the water a bit and it comes out and it's wide. So you do the volumes, figure that out. So that's how you get a quintillion grains of sand on an average beach. Let's go now a thousand times bigger than a quintillion. So quintillion was 10 to the 18th power, one with 18 zeros. Now we're talking about one with 21 zeros. That has a name. Next up, sextillion. That is the estimated number of stars in the universe. But let's keep going. I'm not done with you. 10 to the 23rd power. You met that number in your chemistry class in high school. 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd power. That's a mole in chemistry. And a mole is how many particles of a substance occupy a specified mass of that substance. And so there are vessels that contain moles of things. 10 to the 23rd molecules, so here you go. Do you realize there are more molecules of water in a glass of water than there are glasses of water in all the world's oceans? There are more molecules of water in a glass of water than there are glasses of water in the entire volume of water in the world. Correct, okay? You know what, I'm gonna drink to that. Not only that, there are more molecules of air in a single breath of air than there are breaths of air in all the world's atmosphere. That's not just a fun fact. What this means is when I drink a glass of water and then it comes out of me seven different ways, I can sweat it, I can spit it, pee, all of this. It goes back into the environment. Okay, this has gotten really disgusting. In the glass of water you drink, there is water molecules that pass through the kidneys of Jesus. There are air molecules that were breathed by Genghis Khan. In that way, we are deeply connected in the fluids we consume and in the air we breathe. So working up from the mole, we get to 10 to the 81st power. If you multiply all the stars times all the molecules and particles they're made of, you get 10 to the 81 power, which is the sum of all particles that comprise the observable universe. Now you can ask, why would anyone need a number bigger than this? <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> there's nothing else beyond that. <laughs> beyond that to count. To count beyond yes. That. Okay, but that doesn't stop mathematicians. There's a number, a one with a hundred zeros. That would be 10 to the hundredth power. That's called a Google. The company took that word, messed up the spelling of it, and they became the first time most people even ever heard the pronunciation of such a thing. There's a number that dwarfs the Google. That's 10 to the Google power. And is that called a Yahoo? <laughs> no. It's a one with a Google zeros, and that's called the Googleplex. Oh, sweet. If a Googleplex has a Google zeros in it, there are not enough particles in the universe upon which you would write the zeros just to express that number. 
If you put a zero on every particle in the universe, you run out of room to write the Googleplex. Correct. That's insane. That's insane. It's completely insane. It's the Googleplex. It's a big number. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wait a minute. So we went through all this to say, it's a big number. It's a big number. I'm just saying. That's what the session is about, Chuck. Big numbers. So now, why do you have big numbers at all? Because you're no longer counting things in one use of them. You're counting events. So for example, there is a number that dwarfs the Googleplex. It's called SKU's number. It's 10 to the 10th to the 10th to the 34th power. Now that number dwarfs the Googleplex and you can only write it this way with these sort of exponents up there, okay? That's about the total number of combinations of how you would orient the matter in the universe. So for example, if I take a molecule within you and swap it with a molecule in me, that's a configuration of the universe. I take something from Alpha Centauri and swap it with Omega SETI 5, which is a fictional place from Star Trek. <laughs> swap 10 atoms here and there, that's another configuration. It's the number of combinations of particle configurations in the universe. So there you have it. Chuck, I just wanted to give you a sense of what big numbers are, and whatever is the big number you thought the big number was, there are bigger numbers than that. There's bigger numbers than that. What I have taken away from this is Jeff Bezos isn't as rich as I thought he was. <laughs> <Huh>? <laughs>